<clears throat> in comparison to the first two talks, this will be more like a lightning talk. I will really blitz through this. It's, um, yeah, a progress report. And um, the sort of thing that I've been working on is using Zig to write libraries for Python, as uh, Loris gave a preview of very kindly in his talk. Um, so just to reiterate my experience in Zig, around 300 lines of code, so you're not going to get any very deep insights about the, the Zig programming language in this talk. Um, but it's uh, an interesting example of something, someone trying to do something with Zig. Um, so rough, rough agenda, like why did I start this project? Is Zig a good fit for writing Python libraries? Spoiler, yes. We'll look at the Zig Python interop, how to compile it, compare with Rust, sorry, but uh, I will, and it won't be a benchmark, it will be a sort of a philosophical uh, comparison, and an unavoidable but hopefully brief overview of Python packaging. Uh, progress so far and my future plans, okay? So before even uh, Zig was released, I um, became aware of Andrew Kelly because he released a library for uh, audio uh, written in C called libsound.io and I like was writing uh, VST plugins at one point in my life and um, so I kind of had this yeah, <laughs> had a, an interest I, I sort of he was on the, the radar of uh, interesting programmers and then a year later released Zig um, but I didn't do anything with that curiosity until around uh, like five years later and I had this light bulb moment um, you'll no also notice I read Hacker News a lot um, which is that you can just import and include a, a C header file in Zig directly and then use symbols from it, which seems like a killer feature. And obviously I've been a Python programmer for more than 10 years and was aware that Python had a C API, so I kind of had this uh, like realization that it might be possible to write um, Python libraries in Zig. And then a year later, Delivery Hero was actually sp uh, sponsoring PyCon in uh, DE in Berlin here, and I submitted a really boring talk, and I'm so glad I didn't get accepted. It was about, like, if a team is using type annotations, do they have faster developer velocity? And then, like, just before the deadline, I, I, I remembered about Zig and, like, this... Uh, the C interop that it had, and I thought it must be possible to write a Python library in Zig, so I submitted a talk completely speculatively, not having achieved it, but kind of making it sound like I <laughs> would be able to achieve it, and I was, I was like over, overjoyed, but also terrified after they accepted it. So the, the output of that is here, um, and it's my intention that it will be a, a, the fastest YAML um, parsing library for Python, ultimately. So is Zig a good fit for writing Python libraries? And I think it, the answer is yes, and it comes down to one simple reason, that C Python is written in C, and it has a C API. Just to answer, like, why wouldn't you write Python libraries in Python? Well, of course, that also happens, but sometimes we need more performance. So, like, traditionally, a lot of Python libraries, like for machine learning or um, numerical stuff, are written in C or C++, or Cython, which is a dialect of... Uh, uh, Python that can pass to C, and increasingly Rust. So Rust has a lot of traction in the Python ecosystem for libraries, like for cryptography, uh, parsing, JSON, all sorts of things. Um, but Zig's got like three very, uh, I would say, unique, um, in, for the new languages other than C, uh, that make it particularly suitable for this. So the first one I already mentioned, which is the ability to include a header file directly. And uh, one other thing to point out is that Python, since version 3.2, has a kind of limited API, uh, which gives you a stable ABI, which is, if you target that limited API, it's, the ABI is guaranteed to be stable across versions, including versions that haven't been released yet, which was uh, introduced to solve this kind of bootstrapping problem where like every minor version of Python would be released, but then everybody who had C or C++ library had to recompile for the next minor version. So 
there would never be the, the library ecosystem there for each new version. So by introducing this kind of stable ABI, like um, pre-existing compiled uh, libraries could work with the new version immediately. So next important feature is this which is that you can declare a function to have a, a call convention of .c, so that allows the zig function to be called directly from C, which is obviously essential because Python, which is C, needs to call our zig library. And then finally, there are some like specific types that are like compatible with the, the C ABI. And then one sort of like philosophical, the more I kind of get into it and like interact with the zig community, I would say one thing that I think they both have in common is they don't really have a single large corporate owner like Go, C Sharp, Java, Kotlin. They're kind of like this all rebellious, self-funded, uh, like standalone community just trying to like do it themselves. And they both have a Zen, which you can print if you type Zig Zen. And uh, Python obviously has its own Zen. And a couple of them are even almost identical. Like in the Zen of Python, we've got readability counts, uh, Zig has favor reading code over writing code, um, and there's a couple. There's a couple of others that are quite similar. So, yeah, there's. I feel like there's philosophical alignment between the two programming languages. Anyway, so this is the simplest possible Python library you can write in Zig. So, first thing here, first five lines, we're importing the Python header, opting into that limited API, which is the thing I mentioned before, which is gar guaranteed to be stable across the different versions. Then here. I'm just explicitly defining some symbols from the header that I'm going to use. And those are all kind of like nicely documented in the Python docs. Um, here, this is, this is our library. This is all it does right now. It returns the integer one. Um, it returns a pointer to a pi object. This pi build value is a uh, function from the, the C API. You can see some, some of the things that I mentioned earlier. This has, this has to be called from Python, so it has the, the C call convention. I'm casting the integer one to a C integer. Yeah, there's a few things there. Here I'm um, defining uh, like a, an array of pi method def structs, and this last um, struct between 28 and 34 is like a sentinel struct that says that's the end of the methods in this library. And then finally, this is only 58 lines. We will define the module here, like Python's a reference counted language. So here in the, the module itself has a reference count on line 39. And then um, we export for public use this uh, creation function that lets Python create the, the module when we import it. So that's the 58 line simplest possible zig library you can write for python now how do we compile it so i ha i'm not using a build a zig build file at the moment this is an example for windows this isn't a windows computer but i, I i'll get into some chat about windows in a minute so first of all this is a library i haven't tested release methods other than release fast we have to link c zig doesn't do this by default for some reason, this wasn't necessary on Mac OS. I have no idea why. You have to use uh, the C library on Mac OS. OK. Now I know. That's, I'm glad. That's why it's and that's why I arranged this meetup. <laughs> no. uh, very important to note that on Windows, Python uses the, the Microsoft Visual C ABI. And that took me a shockingly long time to figure that out and the implications of that. Uh, I need to allow undefined symbols in shared libraries. I guess it kind of makes sense to me. Force the output to be dynamically linked. This is just telling Zig like where to, to write the, the binary. And there's a particular directory in a Python uh, instance or environment where the file needs to live that Python can tell us. Then there's a bunch of directories we need to include and a bunch of library directories. And again, Python can tell us those directories. And actually, Python has its own machinery for compiling C and C++ libraries, um, like inv uh, invoking Clang or GCC, depending on the platform. So it has this information that you can introspect 
in its own build tool. So we can kind of like reuse that to figure, figure out the, the directories that we need to include. And finally, the zig source file. And then we have a working library, which I won't do a live demo of, but you can check the repository and the CI pipeline and it will show that it does work. So just about Windows, just to show, this is more a, 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 an indication of my own ignorance. Bearing in mind I've been programming in Python almost exclusively for like more than a decade. Um, so my knowledge of like compiling programs on Windows was not very strong. So I started this on July the 11th. Uh, it was working on Mac and Linux and I just, you can just see, it just goes on and on and on. Another screen of, of commits, trying different things. Finally, it's like seven months later on January the 1st, I merged. During that period, I, one of these commits, like I was crying. I was talking to my wife, I cried. I was like, I know it's possible to a compiler. <laughs> compiler, uh, yeah, Python library written in Zig on Windows. I know I'm just so close. But anyway, yeah, so that was definitely the, the slowest 38 lines of code of my entire career. But it's nothing to do with Zig. It's just um, my own kind of lack of understanding. But the Discord community of Zig was super helpful, like a... Um, Someone helped me realize that I needed to specify the, the ABI on Windows. Like that was one thing I needed to realize. Super useful uh, community and super friendly as well. So yes, comparison with Rust. So uh, as I said, like Rust has a lot of traction in the Python e ecosystem. And part of that is because they, there are some quite mature, well-featured libraries or frameworks for writing um, Python libraries in Rust. So this is the main one, Py03. Um, and this is just bindings for the Python C API in Rust. And that is 46,000 lines of Rust. And I would say also, like, the API is more, it's Rust. This is not like you're interoping with a C API. This is a, a complete abstraction, which goes to the thing that Laura said, actually. It's more abstraction focused, I think. So there's a complete abstraction over the Python API. You wouldn't really be able to refer to the C API and say, OK, yeah, this is mapping to that C function. And then even on top of that framework, there's another 12,000 lines of Rust framework called Maturin which is just a framework for like installing Rust written Python libraries into your Python environment. So we're talking like 59,000 lines of Rust to get to the hello world of what we just demoed in that 58 lines of uh, Zig. And I think like the obvious difference is like C interop is a, is a first class um, idea in the, in the Zig programming language. So packaging, like it's well known that Python packaging is a huge dumpster fire. Um, so like libraries can be written in C, C++, Rust, and now Zig. And, and, but we don't really want to force users to have any particular C, C++, Rust, or Zig tools locally in order to install libraries. So the solution in Python is wheels, which is basically just a zip file with a pre-compiled binary and a file name that matches a, a certain format. So this is a, an example of the cri cryptography li library, which is actually written in Rust. Um, it's just the name, the package number, the version of Python, the ABI. ABI3 is the stable ABI. And then like the platform, the uh, architecture, uh, operating system. So my progress, so that's a proof in GitHub that the simplest possible library that we, we just reviewed works on Linux, Windows, and Mac. I, um, the yeah, thing I haven't really talked about is my intention is to, to write an actual YAML parsing library in Python. And so uh, Jakob, who's here, has written a Zig YAML um, library. And so um, I won't show you the code of my prototype. It's horrendous. Um, but I do have a benchmark of passing a million line file. So I, there are benchmarks, don't worry, benchmarks are coming. Um, uh, passing a million line YAML file with uh, Jakob's Zig YAML, but mashed together with the Python C API, so calling it from Python, and the current fastest libraries in Python. 
And those are the results. So, uh, yeah, small is good. Yeah, goes uh, go, go zig. <laughs> But what, what's actually kind of surprising to me about this is that pi YAML, which is the next fastest, is it written in C. So still this uh, library has the potential to be like 10, more than 10 uh, times faster than um, a Python library written in C. I would love to be able to explain to you now why that the difference is so great there. And I, hopefully will in future get my, my head around um, that. So, yeah, and then one final bit of progress to point out is that um, this is published on the Python package manager, well, the, the version that, that just returns the number one for now. So you can, uh, there's a source distri distribution, so from any operating system you can install it, and if you've got zig locally it will also uh, compile. But also on Linux, on x86-64 architecture, you can install the library and you don't need to have zig locally to be able to use it, which is kind of like that's table stakes now for Python libraries. Like people expect functioning binary wheels. Uh, they don't want to deal with like a tool chain of, yeah, I need this compiler installed or, or uh, yeah, anything like that. So, future plans, publish wheels for Windows and Mac. I would love to get time. <laughs> yeah, contribute to Zig YAML, get full uh, YAML support. Finish the actual library so it passes YAML in a usable way uh, for real. One thing I didn't, um, yeah, just to briefly touch on. So, there are some macros. So this is meth no args is a macro on line 25, which in this case Zig does understand. But there are other macros in the Python C API, which at the moment Zig can't translate. And so to work around that, I've kind of inlined my human understanding of the macro into, yeah. But it would be cool to kind of like highlight all of those upstream to Zig and say that this macro should be understandable, like, yeah, but I need to get around to that. And then the last thing to think about is like, is a bindings of Zig Python library framework really necessary given the, the, the yeah, the, it feels like maybe not, but I, uh, I guess this part of this project is like to use it as a vehicle for like exploring what things like that may or may not be necessary. Um, and the same for like building building uh, libraries written in Zig and, and publishing them is a framework necessary? I'm not really sure yet. Ideally, I would get to a functioning library that people actually use first, so. Yes, thanks. I'll try to be as quick as I could. <laughs> Questions? <laughs> I'll be happy if there aren't any. <laughs> That's fine. Don't feel like you have to ask. <laughs> What's the story with YAML? Because uh, when I hear YAML, I'm thinking, okay, declarative uh, language, and eventually people will want functions inside it because they uh, want to reuse stuff everywhere. Then you need to pull something in and stuff like that. <laughs> yeah. What's the general uh, story of YAML in Delivery YAML, Hebrew. it's a hot mess, isn't it? It's like that, uh, po that poem by Andrew about whether they, you should use YAML for the Zig build system. It's, yeah, so I mean, the, the, but the real, to answer your question seriously, we use it. Uh, so I work in the customer service um, kind of tools department and, and we, when a customer has a problem with an order, we define the journey that they follow to get a resolution of that problem in these like multi hundred thousand line YAML tree structures. And like there's one for sort of every 40 country that we live in and then also various integration points like the restaurant facing 100,000 line YAML file. The, uh, yeah, so we've sort of taken YAML with, and to extremes, I'd say, uh, yeah. Yeah, it's the help center programming language for us, yeah. 
But, but I sort of like realized that the, the Python libraries were, were a bit long in the tooth. They're like quite crafty legacy C that was wrapped up a long time ago, probably hasn't got much love or attention for a long time, so it was maybe like an opportunity to, to freshen that part of the Python ecosystem. But yeah, but YAML itself is weird. Like some weird things about YAML is like no is also Boolean false which is weird if you're using two-letter country codes. You will, might get mixed up with Norway, <laughs> for example. That's one just gotcha, but there's loads. Like, it's a hot mess, yeah. Good decision to stick to 1.2 in the library, actually. Yeah. Might not be direct to you directly, but is the goal of the C import in ZIG to actually be able to include any C header on planet Earth that's available? Because I personally made experience with headers which don't work. For example, the Windows driver kit, which is a total mess. Mm. That probably isn't a question for me. It's going to be a question for smarter people than me. Yeah. Okay, so long story short, uh, there are some C constructs they relate to macros, they are impossible to translate to zig. So C translate has to be a best effort thing. Today, I think it's not yet the best that it could be. There are still some improvements, uh, but it, some people have made such disgusting horrors with macros. Okay, I, I can be more precise. The problem is when a C library offers an API where a macro is part of the API. So basically they want you to use a macro as if it were a function. When people do that, uh, that occasionally is untranslatable and we need in Zig to figure out, uh, to come up with a, a way of basically having a human come in and uh, smooth over these uh, things. Uh, that's how it has to be done. How precisely, we don't know yet. I, I've, I basically, uh, by the way, I've experience i went through most of your journey no windows thank god um, <laughs> i went through most of your journey when i wrote a redis module because redis also has a header that prom uh, that promises uh, abi compatibility so you can write modules and etc and yeah there are also there some tiny things that just don't map uh, to zig but in, in practice uh, also one last thing here's another problem you can hide inside an header file arbitrary C code. Like uh, there are, it's actually not that uncommon that there are some libraries whose part of their offering is that it's a header only library. So the entire library is like one file. Uh, and uh, so long story short, tra translating header files means being able to translate uh, having to translate a bunch of like a bunch of C things. That's not the only way, by the way. Like ideally, if you have your C files, you compile them as an object file, you don't translate them, you just compile them correctly, and then you only include the header file, but it's like, a, it's an art, more than a science. The direct follow-up question to this is, is C Translate willing to have hacks for these special, special macros, or does it want to be general? Cool. Then, just to wrap up, again, I may not have time to organize this again in the near future, but the meetup is there and it started, and I think we shouldn't waste the kind of members that it has and the great first meetup. Uh, so, yeah, like reach out to me if you're in Berlin and you're interested in helping me maybe arrange another one. And thanks. And yeah, I th like if people want to go to a bar, then I, I mean, I need Emin to recommend. <laughs> yeah, so, but we, yeah, tidy up a little bit and then, yeah. Cool, all right. Thank Thanks you. a lot. Thank you. Cool.